Welcome back to the Sports Mag Zone. We continue with cricket. The Hero Caribbean Premier League is set to run from August 18 to September 10 in Trinidad and Tobago. And as we continue our preview, we look at the Barbados Tridents today. The Tridents have retained Jason Holder, Harry Gurney, Johnson Charles, Shea Hope, Hayden Walsh Jr., Ashley Nurse, Jonathan Carter, Raymond Reefer, and Justin Greaves. They also have redrafted Kyle Mayers. The full squad reads Rashid Khan, Jason Holder, Marcus Soynes, ha Harry Gurney, Alex Hales, Johnson Charles, Shea Hope, Hayden Walsh Jr., Ashley Nurse, Jonathan Carter, Raymond Reefer, Kyle Mayers, Joshua Bishop, Naeem Young, Justin Greaves, Rahamadullah Gurbaz, and Cheyenne Janka. So Lance, um, of course, this Barbados Trident squad, you know, a very strong squad. Um, they are the defending champions. Jason Hole is getting all the practice right now with the West Indies team. And I feel like they're set to obviously defend their title. How strong is this squad? Very, very strong. They're a little inconsistent in the group stage of the tournament last year, but they got their act together by playoff time and became good enough to win the championship. And um, they are led by Jason Holder, who now has a lot of experience as a team leader. Um, you mentioned just now getting all the practice, albeit red ball cricket. But um, if in fact he comes away from England with triumph and a West Indies success, yeah. that would do a lot for his confidence. And I think he would come into the CPL, you know, brimming with, with confidence and self-assurance in the trying to repeat as champions here with the Tridents. Lance, when we spoke to Alex um, regarding the draft on the zone, of course, she was surprised along, and she did. Um, she was quick to point out that Darren Ganga as well was surprised with the inclusion of Alex Hales. Of course, it's because Alex Hales didn't really have a good showing in CPL last year. Um, how confident are you in Alex Hales? Um, you know, we trouble you and call you a Bayesian on the show. And what do you think <laughs> about um, Alex's inclusion in the Tridents? Well, he's a top-class player. It, he just had a, a, a horrific time in the Caribbean last year in the CPL. It's up to him to put that behind him and uh, get himself attuned to the job at hand here, which starts on the, the 18th of August. But he is a quality player. I don't think um, his, his ability should be questioned. It's just a matter of delivering. And um, the tournament lasts like five weeks or so, so he has time to get his act together, even, even if he doesn't start well. But he, he is a quality player. The inclusion of the big name, number one T20 bowler, Rashid Khan, um, obviously just strengthens this already strong team some more. Uh, how much do you rate Rashid Khan, Lance, and what can he bring into this squad that can just ensure that they keep their title? Well, one of, one of the best bowlers in T20 cricket or white ball cricket globally, so um, that speaks for itself as if the Barbados Tridents needed to be stronger with the bowling. Because if you look at the stats coming out of last year yeah. with Hayden Walsh, Raymond Reefer, Holder and Gurney, they filled four of the top five bowling spots as far as the top bowlers were concerned. So that tells you a lot about why the Tridents were successful last year, that of the five top bowlers in the CPL tournament last year, four of them were from the Tridents. And if you're strong with bowling, it sets you up very well for a championship win in a tournament like the CPL. Definitely. You know, Lance, um, we had a, a different um, different groups of people talking about different teams. We had um, Colin Board, of course, we had Omar Khan and all these different things. Nobody has expressed any sort of dissatisfaction with the tournament being held in Trinidad and Tobago. And I think it's because, um, one, there aren't going to be any fans. Um, I didn't get your opinion, though. Does this take away um, from the excitement of the CPL for you personally? Well, it will, for sure, if the fans aren't there. But then Lance, you don't go to the CPL matches. I haven't seen I, you. I've been to several. <laughs> OK. I've been to several. Well, and and you, don't, you don't have to be at the matches <laughs> to know the excitement because it's, it, it's there for you on television Correct. as yeah, well. Yeah. So with no fans attending the CPL matches, there is going to be a lot lost by way of atmosphere and so on. But you know what? Phil Simmons said on the Sportsmax Zone yesterday that for the first test in Southampton, for the first day or day and a half, it felt a little bit strange and so on. But after that, you, you get acclimatized, so to speak, with the conditions. And I think fans will always, always be missed if they aren't there for something like the CPL. But the cricket is really what's important. And if the cricket is good, I think the fans watching on television on Sportsmax will 
will grow to to embrace the event yeah. and uh, while it will lose something without spectators I think it still will be a huge spectacle. Definitely Lance last year Raymond Rifa he definitely got my attention by his brilliant performance for the Tridents so much so that even when we were previewing the West Indies squad you know I had only good things to say based on that um, that indelible stay and that he left on me um, the, just the brilliant performance that he had. Raymond Rifa can he do the same thing that he did for the Barbados Tridents this year based on how he's looking? Yeah, he's, he's, he's a good player. He has a lot of talent based on the West Indies setup at the moment because of the likes of a Jason Holder who is captain. Uh, there is no current space for a Raymond Reefer in the, in the West Indies, you know, first 11. But he is, he's a solid all-rounder and a, a huge competitor. And the Trident's team is better for having him there. Well, joining us now to look ahead to the Trident's defense of their title is one of their key figures from last season, spinning all-rounder Ashley Nurse. Welcome, Ashley. Hi. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you. I'll start by asking you about uh, the blend and the balance of this Barbados Trident's team as you all go to defend your title. Yeah, well, um, I think that's one of the things that is the Trident's trait straight from we are a balanced unit and if you, if you remember last year we had a, a very balanced team and i think even on the bench you have like for late players on the bench as well so i think that will go a long way into the tournament ashley are you confident of one playing this tournament during a covid 19 pandemic and two playing the entire tournament in trinidad and tobago well on, to be honest with you i don't really have control about, about really really tournament players i mean we're faced with we're faced with this pandemic, so I guess we have to adapt to each condition that is brought brought to us. I'm I'm very confident. I'm a confident person. So once he wants to on prayer calls, play. I think we we go and give our best. So what have you been doing to get prepared? You know personally for the CPL. Yeah, we returned to the Nets um, last week with the Barbara spray. So I've been putting in my work. Um, I'm also be I've also been training a lot on my own. My friends and I so. I've been doing a lot of biking and hiking and stuff like that. So just getting the body in shape and just getting ready for the CPL. Yeah. Actually, the Barbados Tridents last season were a little bit patchy in the group stage of the competition, winning, losing, winning, losing. But you got things right when it became really important. Can you talk us through the championship run last year? Um, preparation was really good. I mean, leading up to the tournament. So if, although we, were, we, we didn't get the run we wanted, we always knew that. Once we pick, once we picked up momentum at the back in the tournament, we, we gave some problems. And a lot of people didn't realize that we actually came second in the group stage. Um, the fixture, the fixture we had last year, we didn't have a lot of games. Um, in the first half of the season, so a lot of people were saying that the Trojans were like at the bottom of the table, but they didn't understand we played these amount of games. Yes. So we always that we had our back, we we had our we had our home leg at the back in the tournament. So that that five games on the trot will always give you momentum going into the last couple of games. And into the playoffs, so it, it it wasn't a case where we were really sketchy. I mean, oh yeah, we, we lost some games leading up to the to our home games and stuff like that. But we knew once we did well away from home, that the tournament would become easier. Yeah, um, actually, you're primarily considered an, an off spinner, but uh, we we know that quite often you you do a lot of lashing of the ball towards the the tail end of the innings. Um, how confident are you with your your hitting ability and the critical innings that we've seen you play late in, in, in innings for the Tridents? As I said before, I'm a, I'm a very confident person. So when I, when I go to bat, I always try to put myself in. Well, when I go to bat at practice, I always put myself in positions where we be realistic in the game. So training-wise, I, I just go to bat the last five overs because I'm considered as a finisher in the Tridents 11. So I just try to focus my, my training around hitting the ball at the back end. And, and obviously try to maximize balls at the back of the inning. So I always just try to, to just do my job for the team. Can you give us a comment on Jason Holder's growth as a captain? We see him leading the West Indies test team admirably at the moment. You've been um, a player with Jason Holder as captain for several years now, so you would have seen his growth. Um, first on the Barbados Tridents front, and your thoughts on how he leads the West Indies team in test cricket at the moment. Um, I, I think the, the, the CPL campaign last year really did 
really did a lot for his captaincy. Me, he was very, very good last year. Made some bold decisions. He was very proactive as a skipper last year in the CPL. I mean, coming coming from the year in front, we lost practically, but we lost all five of our home games last year. He was on a bit of pressure from the from the crowd and stuff like that. But I think last year he really stepped up to the plate. Made some bold decisions, made some 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 tough calls and stuff like that. And I think that last year really made him the captain that he is today. I mean, as you can see, he's making some decisions even in test right now. And congrats to him for winning the last test also. But I think that last year's CPL campaign really, really opened his up, opened up his eyes as a, as a skipper. Ashley, how excited are you to work with the number one T20 bowler, uh, Rashid Khan? What does he bring to the Barbados Trident's camp? Yeah, very happy to have him. Um, any any player of that caliber to come and join your, your squad, you can only be a, only be a plus for the team. Um, me, um, Rashid and I have a, a decent relationship. I mean, I played against him a lot, lots of times in the national arena. So we have a good relationship. So hopefully, I can carry on throughout the CPL and learn lots of stuff from him. And hopefully, he comes with his ear again. Yeah, you know, actually, we mentioned at the top of this segment that uh, the Tridents never even, never really, really need that much of a boost in the bowling department based on what happened last year. I was making the point that the bowling statistics from last year shows. Of the top five bowlers in the CPL, four of them were from the the Tridents. You had Gurney, you had um, uh, the 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 Antiguan leg spinner Hayden Walsh. There was um, Holder himself and Raymond Reefer. And we know your your quality as an off spinner as well. So you almost have a surplus of quality in the bowling department now going into 2020. Yeah. Um, it's always good to have bowling in T20 cricket. I mean, everyone that's at T20 cricket has a batting game. So once you can get lots of wickets in T20 game, more than likely you'll win the game. So, I mean, if you have a guy like, like Harry Gurney, Jason Holder with a new ball, uh, Raymond coming through the middle, he has spinners in the middle of you, and, and then you have Rashid Khan as well. They can only argue well for the team. Once you get wickets, as I said before, once you get wickets in, in a T20 game, it always puts the, the opposition under pressure. Yeah. How, how satisfying has it been for you as an international cricketer, um, Ashley Nurse, to see international cricket back up, the West Indies in action, just weeks ahead of the start of the CPL? Because we've gone four months, we had gone about four months of no international sport almost and no international cricket. Is this test series in England sort of whetting your appetite for uh, the CPL in mid-August? Um. For sure it is. Um, I think not only mine, but entire, for the entire world, yeah. entire cricket fraternity around the world. I mean, having been in lockdown for for quite some quite some time, to see cricket playing again is, is, is a fantastic thing. Um, with the West Indies winning as well, warm a lot of hearts for the Caribbean. So I think this this test series really, really um, opened up the eyes, as I said, to, to the cricket world. Because everyone now realizes that you can play cricket even in a pandemic, once you follow the protocols. Yeah, and all of the, the teams that we've spoken to uh, so far, the CPL um, teams involved here, have spoken about the differences in preparation because preparation is, is shorter now than it, than it would have been in the past. From a Trident's perspective, when do you expect to be in TNT and how will the preparation go? Honestly, I haven't heard anything about the, the group getting together. So, as I said before, we, I'm back at training with the, with the Barbados Sprite. So, majority of the guys that are in the training team are also in the Barbados Sprite. So, we are training together at the moment. So, we know we know each other pretty well. So, we're just going to go through our paces at home at the Kensington Oval. And then, obviously, we get together as a, as a, as a unit with the Barbados training. So, we go from there. Yeah. Ashley, are you one that thrive on the energy from fans? <laughs> um, not really. I just try to go and do my job. I mean, <laughs> people people say I have their opinions, but I don't really just I don't really try to get it to me. I just try to do my job. Once I do my job, well, I know that I contribute to the team, and once everyone in the team does their job, I'm gonna let you come out on top. So does this mean you are going to be fine playing behind closed doors? Then we're expecting you to be on your A game with no fan shouting. <laughs> But it's something I'm accustomed to. You play for a slack in the Caribbean, there's no yeah. one watching cricket anyhow. So <laughs> it's just about what and they say doing your job. It's nothing to do for me. Yeah. And before you leave us, Ashley, we know that a lot of the players in 
England at the moment playing in this in this test match are, are friends of yours, teammates of yours and so on. Any any comment that you would want to make at the moment about the performance of the test team in England and their prospects for the second test? I just want to tell the guys to just keep doing what they're doing to me. They're fighting well. They're showing that they're hungry to play cricket against these big teams. And once you stay consistent, I think we'll get the job. we job done. Ashley, is it that you're still celebrating Liverpool's win, so you choose to wear this T-shirt on our show today? <laughs> no, nah, not really. I'm a bit disappointed with the result today, but I'll take the victory in the Premier League anyway. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Ashley Nurse, great talking to you, and um, continue training with the Barbados Pride as the Tridents get ready for action in Trinidad and Tobago. And all the best as the defending champions. All right, thank you, guys. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Yeah, Ashley Nurse, a uh, big-hitting off-spinner who, as I mentioned, and he acknowledges as well, he plays with a lot of confidence. And he does, as he said, play the finishing role for the Barbados Tridents. And I've seen him hit some pretty um, important innings for the Barbados Tridents. Uh, late in the innings, even a couple of times for the West Indies when he played white ball cricket as well. So we wish him and the rest of the Barbados Tridents team all the best August 18 for the start of the CPL. Definitely, Lance. All the best. And of course, I can't help but notice that all these teams look extremely strong. And with the um, exclusion of fans, I feel like it's going to be an equal battle. Any team can win. You go to break. Still more to come on the Sportsmax Zone. Back in a moment. <laughs> 